I'm trying to focus a little bit more on local stories, and uh, this one is one that happened in southwest Virginia, in Wise County, Virginia. This is dated July 17th, 2019. So happens to be about an hour from where I'm from, and I remember hearing about this in our local news, and I remember watching for updates about this, and as time went on and more came out about it, um, it was just such a horrible event that happened. And I just wanted to share this story. This happened in the Wise County, Virginia area. Um, there's a small little town. It's an old town called Appalachia. And you kind of pass through it on your way between Big Stone Gap and Norton, Virginia. It's one of the older towns in that area and I will share some photos of the town on this video just to kind of give people an idea of the small community that this was. So I'll just start out by reading this woman's obituary and then I will go from there. Janina Lorraine Jefferson, age 38, left this world too suddenly on Sunday, November the 27th, 2016. She was a 1996 graduate of Powell Valley High School and received a waterworks degree from Mountain Empire Community College. She had a Class II waterworks cer certification and was recently employed with the town of Appalachia. She was very dedicated to her work. Janina loved to be artistic and, just, and had just recently completed drawings on the town of Big Stone Gap businesses with the Whoville theme. She loved her children and took great pride in them and their accomplishments. She also loved to surprise people and was a great listener. She had a commanding personality she loved to travel, but she was very family-oriented. She, she was just preceded in death by her mother, Sarah Bruner Jefferson. Surviving are her three children, Trey Lomax, Brianne Lomax, and Xavier Lomax. Her father, Gregory Jefferson, one brother, Richie Jefferson, Two sisters, Tiffany Blair Eldridge and Amber Jefferson. Um, this is from the website WJHL.com News. It's been nearly three years since investigators say Janina Jefferson was murdered by her ex-husband, Eric Jones, in Appalachia, Virginia. Eric Jones is accused of shooting and killing Jefferson on November the 27th, 2016 at the town of Appalachia Water Treatment Plant where she worked. We're seeing surveillance video for the first time from a Big Stone Gap convenience store just after investigators say Jones killed Jefferson. The Wise County Sheriff's Office is working with the U.S. Marshal's Office to track down Eric Jones. They've received many tips in the case and we're, we've learned they're working on new ones as we speak. Her family says, she came here and ate with us. She told me she loved me. I hugged her and then she went back on the mountain. That's the last time Brianne Lomax saw her mother just hours before she was killed. Janine's, Janina's three children describe her as a great mother who always pushed them to follow their dreams. We knew we had to respect her, but we had a friend, but we had a friendship with her. Janina Jefferson and Eric Jones were married in 2013. Jones was their stepdad. At first we were really happy for her and we did feel like a family, but it's weird because it was just like a switch. They said his behavior drastically changed. 
kind of seemed like he was Pops, which is what we called him, but he slowly started to revert back to his old ways and started hanging out with the wrong crowd. Money started to disappear and drugs, and we started to see a change in his behavior. Investigators say Jefferson was ambushed at the town of Appalachia Water Treatment Plant where she was working alone on the night shift. As soon as she exited the vehicle, I think that's, I think that's the act that happened that killed her. She had no idea it was coming, said Charles, Sergeant Charles Curry and Assistant Sheriff Grant Kilgore with the Wise County Sheriff's Office. Police shared surveillance video with, from the Scotchman Convenience Store on Gilly Avenue in Big Stone Gap the night of the murder. Jones buys a pack of beer and then walks out. Police said this was the last confirmed sighting of Eric Jones in nearly three years. Investigators have received tips from across the country as far away as Mexico and even Cuba. Kilgore tells us he believes Jones is no longer in the country. We've searched houses in Florida. We've searched houses up north in Ohio. Investigators say Jones is no stranger to law enforcement and has served prison time. In the mid-1990s, Jones was arrested for attempted murder for hire. At the time of the murder, Jones was facing charges of strangling Janina a few weeks before her death. Our belief is that Eric Jones had it in his mind that he was not going back to prison. I think that his motive was to eliminate who he felt might be able to put him back there. I think he's wanting to go on with his life, and it's our job to make sure that that doesn't happen. U.S. Marshal's Office billboards have been posted on the East Coast and further west. He's considered armed and dangerous. Do not approach him. You can call 1-877-WANTED-2. You may also call the Wise County Sheriff's Office at 276-328-3756. The U.S. Marshal's Office is offering a $10,000 reward for the person who can give information to his whereabouts. To support her three children, who were the center of her life, 38-year-old single mom Janina Jefferson worked multiple jobs. She worked from 4 p.m. to midnight at the water treatment plant in the Virginia town of Appalachia. On November the 27, 2016, the water plant was also where her life came to an end. On that evening, police say Janina's ex-husband, Eric Jones, allegedly shot her to death while she was headed in to work. It was the Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. He has been on the run ever since. Crystal Lack, Jefferson's best friend, said Janina was very well liked in the community. She was extremely loyal. You could trust her with anything. She always put her children first. As part of that devotion to her children, she took the job at the water treatment plant, even though its conditions put off some of those who knew her. The, the facility is described as being located deep in the woods and on a single dark road leading up and away from the town. I can imagine for a woman, especially a woman who was going through these problems with her ex, you know, that it had to be kind of a scary place. In 1998, a female drug dealer paid Jones in crack cocaine to set a house on fire and make sure it burned to the ground. At the time, Jones set the resident ablaze, a mother and two young children were still inside. Fortunately, they all made it out alive. Two months later, authorities captured Jones in Texas he was convicted of attempted murder and served five years of a 15-year sentence. He seemed to have turned his life around when he began dating Jefferson. People really seemed to like him. Her family seemed to accept him and like him. Um, I thought he was good for my mom, her daughter said. 
I was happy for her, but then it was a complete change. The couple got married in 2014. Not long after, he changed. He completely changed. He started drinking, and he was Jekyll and Hyde. On a serious red flag went up on the 4th of July at a barbecue. Her daughter recalled seeing Jones get extremely drunk and taking out a handgun. He fired it four times in the air. She said it caused everyone to be become afraid, and the kids were running around everywhere, scared. It was just a different person. The lives of her children and her family were forever changed by her meeting Eric Jones. Jefferson met Jones in 2013. He was the son of a local preacher, a former drug user, and he had just been freed from jail for doing five years for a horrifying crime. Now, when you look at the photos of Janina Jefferson and her family, you see this very put-together, very well-put-together young woman, um, a hard worker. She had completed college, got her degree. She was very artistic. She enjoyed to travel. She enjoyed spending time in her community, helping the betterment of her community. And is it possible that she wanted the rest of the community and the rest of the people in her life to see Eric Jones as a changed um, person who deserved a second chance? Um, or was he just another project for her? Was, was she the type of woman who was drawn to men who she thought she could help and she thought she could change? I don't know. After doing this, his time, Jones had seemed to turn his life around. In fact, when he was dating Jefferson, people really began to like him. Well, you know what? A narcissist is very, very good at finding a source of supply, finding a victim who is well-liked. Now, I want to say this. I, I'm, I'm just going by my own thoughts here. I don't know a whole lot about this woman and her previous life to him. I don't know about her marriage to her children's father and what kind of relationships she had or what kind of relationships she had with other people. In this story, it says that her mother had just recently passed away. Now, she, narcissists love to find people who are just down just enough. And I'm not saying that this woman was down, but he, she was a perfect victim for him. Because she probably was going through a little bit of stress dealing with the loss of her mother. She was probably overworked being a single mom to three kids. And she was probably just vulnerable enough that he was able to come in and give her this impression of himself as this savior, this great guy who was putting his life together and he had done his time and he was a changed man and... People began to like him because they liked her. But I'm sure if you question her family and friends, there were one or two people who always got a bad feeling about him. There were probably a couple of people who always kind of kept him at arm's length. There may have even been a few who said to her, I just don't have a good feeling about this guy and... Maybe you should think twice before you get too involved. But she probably would not have listened to that. And the thing is, with a narcissist, you will turn your back on those people. Because you're seeing what they're showing you. She was probably seeing this man as this perfect guy who's changed his life. He doesn't deserve to be uh, ridiculed and constantly living under this veil of his past. He deserves to be able to be part of the community and be liked and um, he was feeding off of that. He was he he was luring her in. He was 
getting what he wanted from her, getting himself elevated in the community, getting a good name by being associated with her. And then he didn't get his way. Things didn't go his way. And the true narcissism in him came out. And that's just how I see it. Because he he was hiding. The, the person that they knew, the person that they met, and, and that he had shown them in the first year, was the narcissist was hiding behind the mask. This man that took this gun out shooting it into the air, scaring everybody, that was his true person, who he truly was. Jefferson split from Jones shortly after this incident, and the couple was reportedly off and on again for a while. But she filed for a divorce, and he became violent. And she filed for a divorce. He slammed her against a shelf and was choking her. She pushed him off and was like, you need to leave. Police officers responded and took him into custody, and she filed a protective order against him. As Sergeant Dwayne Phillips with the Wise County Sheriff's Office told, pursuit, in pursuit, they responded, they see that she has these strangulation marks and where he had hit her, so they had secured warrants against him for the strangulation and domestic violence. They arrested him on those charges. Authorities say he bonded out and moved in with his mother. Phillips also said of Jefferson, she was scared of Eric, unsure of what he would do. You look at his past, he tried to kill three people. She was worried about working up there at the water treatment place by herself at night. She really was living in fear for her life. On the night of her murder, a friend said they couldn't get in touch with her, so they asked police to do a safety check. Phillips told in pursuit he remembers it being very dark and cloudy as he drove down this daunting path to the water treatment plant. Upon arriving, he saw the worst possible outcome. She was lying in the middle of the parking lot. She had been shot several times, execution style. Um, Jefferson was dead and her truck was missing. Officers located the truck at the home of his mother in Big Stone Gap. However, he was nowhere to be seen. Investigators say someone drove Jones to the water plant and he hid there while and waiting for Jefferson to show up for work. Authorities say Jones took off in her work truck and ditched it at his mom's. He then got a lift to a local convenience store where he appeared on camera purchasing alcohol and cigarettes. He has not been seen since. In, pers in pursuit with John Walsh, spoke with U.S. Marshal Jim Satterwhite about the case. He said that Seth Rowland, whose mother was married to Jones, was the one who drove the suspect to the water plant and dropped him off later at the home of another relative. After that, Seth Rowland told us that Eric admitted to him that he had killed Miss Jefferson. Rowland has since been convicted in his role as accessory to murder. As for Jones, there's a very violent man out there. We're going to work this case until we find him one way or the other. But at the moment, we don't have any leads. Jones is charged with capital murder. Investigators say it is possible he could be hiding out in a big city and he is considered armed and dangerous. He is um, 175 pounds, 5 feet 7 inches tall. He is a black male and he keeps his head shaven. He has brown hair. His date of birth, August 10, 1970. He is known to drink alcohol, especially, especially beer, and he, is, he uses drugs. He is muscular and he is very much into the TV show The Walking Dead. If you go to watch In Pursuit with John Walsh, Season 1, Episode 23, it's called Murder in Appalachia, and it's dated February the 9th of 2023.
2022. I'm going to click on that and see if I can watch that. It's on the Roku channel. So as of today, this is January the 16th of 2023. This man's never been found. Another man was charged uh, with um, his as, as accessory by because he drove the guy there and then drove him around, I guess, afterwards. And um, he had confided to him, Eric Jones had confided to this other man that he had killed this woman. And so he was charged with accessory. Maybe they thought he knew where this Eric Jones was and that he would turn against him and tell. I don't know that he would because of his violent history. And so as of today, everything that I have found on here says that Eric Jones is still on the run and has not been found. This woman just simply met the wrong guy and their relationship went bad. He became violent and ended up murdering her um, because he didn't want to go back to prison and she had this he had these pending charges against him for domestic violence and so now he's wanted for murder. He's a fugitive. There's a $15,000 reward for information leading to anyone who can bring him in. And I'll leave with this information. If you have any information that may help the authorities, please contact the Wise County Sheriff's Office at 276-328-3756. You may also email them at crimetips at wiseso.net. Once I got started making this video, it became more about Eric Jones murdering this woman and going on the run and becoming a fugitive. And while that's very important, and to see his wanted poster, and to you can look up links, you can go to, a, there's just so many. All you have to do is type in Eric Jones, Janina Jefferson murder, and you will literally find hundreds of links with phone numbers to um, different agencies, America's Most Wanted, just so many different agencies and different phone numbers with uh, the information if anyone should happen to encounter this man keep in mind he is armed and considered armed and dangerous although it's the fbi believes he's no longer in the united states no one really knows someone may know someone in his family or someone he trusts may know as far as the other young man, Seth Rowland, who was uh, convicted as an accessory, charged as a, an accessory, I don't know if he knew before when he drove this man there that he was going there to commit murder. Um, maybe he was also fearful of this man because of his violent history. And maybe he was influ influenced by him and fearful to tell him no. Maybe he had been abusive to him as well. I want to wrap this video up just by saying this. Domestic violence. Like I said earlier in this video when I touched on the narcissism of this man. Not all narcissists are physically abusive and not all of them end up murdering people. But almost all domestic violent murderers of their spouse have some narcissism. They have been allowed to use their violent ways to get by with. And it's very possible that when the, when the daughter was being interviewed and speaking about this... And she said that everyone really liked him and that he that he made her mom happy and that everyone was happy for her. I'm sure, like I said in the beginning, he was putting on his best act. He was he was this guy who had gone through his hardships in life, but he had changed. 
I'm sure he, in, in their private moments, I'm sure that he came across to her as this victim, this victim who had been falsely accused or maybe he had just gotten wrapped up in with the wrong group of people. Maybe he was um, on drugs and he just was convinced to do this crime of burning this house down, attempting to murder these people. Um, and as an empath, as a sympathetic person, this woman was giving him the benefit of the doubt. She wanted everyone else around to see him as this changed man who deserved love and who deserved people to see him that he had overcome his past. Once he got her into this relationship and once he began to see that he had convinced her to believe everything that he was telling her, he began to let his guard down and his mask began to slip. He may have been abusive to her in private leading up to these moments um, when he began to lash out openly and when he began to drink again or at least when he began to drink um, and, and everyone saw it because he could have been drinking the whole time and people just didn't realize it. I think that either through fear or through manipulation he had been able to convince his own family that he was not guilty of these crimes and that he was being falsely accused and um, maybe they knew it maybe they knew because having raised him and having lived around him and his family and friends and people that had known him throughout his life probably distanced themselves from him at some point because he had probably began to become narcissistic with them. They probably caught him up in a lot of lies. He was probably known to um, use his um, muscle and, and intimidation to just get what he wanted from people because they weren't going to try to fight or argue with him. And... Had she agreed to stay with him and had she agreed to go along with his behaviors, he would have continued to get worse. And we see what ended up happening when she stood up for herself and decided she didn't want to, you know, she didn't want anything to do with him anymore. Learn to recognize the signs and sometimes it takes longer for some people. This woman, I don't think it took as long for her. I think once he started to show his true nature and his true violent side, she decided to get out. And it was him who decided not to let her go. And so he did what people like him do. He snuck up on her in the dark and he murdered her and then he fled. And he still wanted and um, I'm sure that despite the fact that this looms over their head knowing that he's out there somewhere. I'm sure her family is trying to pick up the pieces of their lives and move on and just try to keep the happy memories about her alive. And so I'll just wrap this up by saying he did not take away who she was as much as he might be this he he's now become the story he didn't take away who she was she was a mom and a daughter and a friend and she was well liked by her community she was a hard worker she made sure her kids were provided for and she was a woman who just had a great personality and um she was just bright and well liked and he didn't take that away from her. Her memory, uh, the memory that her family and friends have of her, um, he was just a shadow. He was just a shadow in her life. And he, hopefully one day he will be captured and brought to justice in one way or the other. Thanks for listening.